Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I plan to retest the capacity of Starship and Super Heavy given a tweet by Elon Musk on August 28th which read, and I quote, Raptor reached 230 metric tons force over a half million pounds of thrust at peak pressure with some damage. So this version of the engine can probably sustain about 210 tons, should have a 250 plus ton engine in about six to nine months. Target for a booster is 7,500 tons. That's 16.5 million pounds of thrust. So, well, okay. <laughs> so I've upgraded the engines a bit, basically. And I've done some other tweets that I'll go over, but uh, I, I've, I've decided that I'll accept the 210 tons of thrust, and a, uh, it's a tweet, so it's a little bit imprecise. And I'm going to assume that that's the vacuum thrust on the surface engines. So we're uh, taking a look at this. I just made it around 2,100 kilonewtons, which is a little bit over 210 tons of thrust. That gives us less at sea level, of course, but uh, that should do. We still don't know the exact mass of the engine, but... Um, so that's that's what I've gone with. That gives us, uh, he said, target for the booster is 7,500 tons of thrust. Uh, this with 37 engines right now gives us 70, uh, 7,700 tons of thrust at in vacuum for these engines. So, I mean, it's a little bit of interpretation about where we're getting all this thrust, right? Whether it's sea level or vacuum. Now, as far as the 250 tons of thrust in six to nine months, Good luck, Elon. <laughs> I mean, you don't you don't pull out a number like that out of your hat when your 230 ton thrust uh, peak pressure did some damage. And uh, I don't even know if the 210 tons of thrust is legit if uh, you haven't done a full burn with 210s of thrust. He said probably sustain. Well, just do the test. <laughs> I mean, stop trying to set pressure records for heaven's sakes. Just Run the test of 210 tons of thrust and see whether it can sustain it for a proper amount. Uh, you should, uh, it should actually be done where the 210 tons of thrust is sustained for uh, like 50% extra beyond the normal burn time to demonstrate that it can sustain it uh, statistically. And, you know, they have statistical ways of figuring out whether it's enough uh, burn time test. The shuttle main engines were tested for ages, so... Uh, this uh, push pressure boundaries I don't know about. But anyway, I'll take the 210 tons. So that's an upgrade for the Raptors that I've set. And also I decided to reduce some mass on the Starship body because I didn't really account for the fins when I did that. So the dry mass right now is 90 tons. Again, there's a separate capsule section here uh, that's its own 20 tons. And uh, we've got cargo in. So if I take a look at the mass of this Starship right now, we see that it's 1,424 tons with 100 tons of cargo. So we're, we'll test it with 100 tons of cargo, 99.99 tons, and see how that works out first. And then we'll proceed from there. You can see the thrust weight ratios and everything like that. And yeah, uh, so dry mass of this should be 120 tons, uh, maybe 124, I guess, 124 tons. So right around there, and we've got 1,200 tons of fuel propellant. So that's all good. And then I also lightened the Super Heavy. Now Wikipedia, in its infinite wisdom, says that Super Heavy is 180 tons dry. I didn't quite uh, buy that, but I've made the body 180 tons dry. That doesn't include the engine mass, though, and we've got substantial engine mass. So, but... If it's 108 tons altogether, then this tank is really light. So we haven't even gotten to them making that tank yet. So we'll we'll hedge our bet, and still we end up with less than 5,000 tons of mass altogether. It's supposed to be 5,000 tons altogether. The, it's possible that this has more fuel in it. I've got 3,300 tons, and Wiki says 3,400 tons. That's a difference of 3% or so. So maybe we'll add some more. Because the engines have been operated, the burn time is less now. It's only 2 minutes and 28 seconds. So that's really fast. And yeah, uh, before I wasn't interested in putting more fuel in Super Heavy's tank because the burn time was pretty long. But with the engines being operated, perhaps we'll get that extra 100 tons in. Uh, though that'll put us above the 5,000 tons there. So we will see. Anyway, 
So those are my numbers for now, and uh, they can change depending on further information and confirmation. Uh, looking at the Wikipedia numbers, they were just extrapolating from the 5,000 ton number for launch. They don't have specific numbers about the propellant mass or the dry mass of the stage. Uh, so we don't really know what the split is between the dry mass and the propellant mass. Yeah, so that's the big, that's the question for this bit. Anyway, but you've got my numbers, and uh, let's see, first uh, 100 tons, and then we'll work from there. I think it can carry more than 100 tons, and uh, we're going to reserve fuel for landing. So first I'm going to do a test to see how much I actually need to reserve in the super heavy tank to do the return to launch site. So yes, we are going to try, and manually, I'm not going to use a KOS script or anything, I'm going to try and manually bring it back um, over to this general area. We're not going to make any promises or anything at this point. I haven't tried this a whole lot, so... Yep, uh, so we'll abandon Starship on this run first, just to see how much I can uh, reserve. So, throttle up, SAS is on, get ready for a lot of noise. I haven't, like, uh, made a special Raptor part that combines them or anything, so it's 37 engines right now. Ignition. Launch. So uh, it's 7,200 uh, tons of thrust off the pad. So I won't link the changes in the video description just yet because I'll plan to do an update for my real rockets pack and I'll just do a separate video with those uh, describing what the real rockets pack involves and uh, they'll still be bundled into that. Trajectories meant for optimizing return to launch sites are, you know, complicated. It's actually not that loud. Either that or I'm losing my hearing. Might be losing my hearing. So I'll plan to reserve 15 seconds of burn time and we'll see how that works out. I've probably got more throttling on these engines than uh, the real thing has. I think I've got 20 down to 25% when the real engines are planned to have down to 40%, so landing might be easier. Not that I'll make it, but landing in theory would be easier. So, 6 and 5. So 15 seconds, separation. Get that away. Okay, but I don't care about you anymore. I'm going to shut down most of the engines. Uh, no, that's not the ones I want. Those are the ones I want. So now we should have 13 engines active. The seven center ones plus, uh, plus others. Okay, I'm not thrilled with the turning Speed here, turn faster. We've got 3,000 meters per second here, that's a fair amount, but our surface velocity is 1,700. The surface horizontal is 1,600, so that's actually... That, uh, we might need to reserve more. I'm actually not going to have the center... Seven. We'll just use the outer six initially. We'll see if we need more. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, let's get started. Oh, no SAS. Retrograde, please. Okay, I want the center ones as well. So it's sort of a formation like that right now I've got. Okay, we are now going towards the target. Just looking at that target difference. It's not very precise though. Let's slow down here. So we get a more precise sense of things.
Computers can do this a lot better. I cannot. I don't want that much vertical speed right now. We're already going to space anyway. Lots of G-force you can see. And we're not quite going to make it. Yeah, so that's not enough. I'll have to reserve more. Okay, so I'll try to reserve 20 seconds this time. That also means that everything will get less far out, so that will help as well. I slapped on extra RCS ports, but each of these ports is already 2 kilonewtons. It's like uh, space shuttle level RCS ports here, so there's not a whole lot more than I can do. And uh, they are using methane and oxygen. They're like proper engines, so they're not just cold gas thrusters either. Anyway. Uh, and they're probably going to use cold gas thrusters or something. I don't know. I don't know the details of the RCS system. Anyway, so given all that, ignition. And launch. So I haven't got the fins tilting in the right direction here. That doesn't really matter for our uh, test of the payload capacity, so the fins will be the same size and same mass, so I kept it simple. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. I think we can throttle down here. It should still be enough for Starship to get to orbit and everything. But we'll test that, of course. Okay, shut off at 20, separation. Ignition. Okay. And back over here. RCS on. And it should be enabled. So retrograde. Uh, enable. I should enable crossfeed in the BAB. And let's temporarily give it some extra attitude adjustment time. Okay, well, it's turning faster, as you might expect. And that too will help. Okay, I'm going to reduce the max stopping time and ignition of 13 engines. Gotta reduce the max stopping time even more. Kill rotation, throttle up. Okay, throttling down. Because we want to be precise about it, hopefully. It's looking better this time. Oh, it's going further. Okay, shut down. Uh, so we're gonna be off. I think I'm too far north. We'll see. We only have 777 meters per second. I'm hoping that the fact that it is really wide will help in terms of drag. Well, it's all about the heat and everything. We'll see how it goes. We could lose a few engines. It might make landing easier, but <laughs> in principle, we don't want to do that. I really don't need it to mess around with roll. It might be rolling on its own because Smart ASS doesn't understand the grid fins. It has no SAS. Okay, you know what? I'll I'll take it manually, or it might not understand the fins either. I think once we get through the transonic region, the drag will stop the roll. Hopefully. The aero effects are causing a lot of lag. feel like maybe I should invert the grid fins, but I'm not sure. Well, I'll have to make an executive decision about when to retro, huh? Well, alright, let's try now. The engines can stop the roll, potentially. 
if they start. Did they start? Oh, there we go. I don't think they're stopping the roll. Oh, they are slowing it down, though. Mm, well, I find it very hard to control it like this. Uh, we're going up now. Oh, we're really sliding. We're sliding. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, that that's not working out very well. But tell you what, I think SpaceX would be able to land with this much fuel. Um. <laughs> uh, my current situation, on the other hand, seems a little bit more dire. I don't understand the roll thing. Uh, maybe inverting the grid fins will help. Bigger grid fins might help. Um, well, let's see. Does it explode? Okay, it exploded properly, as it should. So there were no weird physics hijinks there. So proper explosion of the booster in that weird configuration. All right, anyway, reserving 20 seconds should be enough. That's what I'll say. Let's test the payload capacity now based on that. Okay, so this time we follow Starship after reserving 20 seconds of fuel in Super Heavy. And we will see how that goes. Ignition. And launch. Okay, we are past the speed of sound and everything looks nominal. Okay, getting ready to shut down. We should probably throttle down a little bit here as I turn more. Okay, and shut down and separation. So that was 20 seconds. Ignition. And off it goes. So again, we're carrying 100 tons right now, and we'll assess how much more we can carry if it turns out that this is okay. I expect that we can carry more, but we'll see. We've got a little bit of gimbling on the vacuum engines in lieu of differential throttling, so... Uh, I will shut off the surface engines after we get to about 2, two G's. Okay, we're hitting about 2 G's here, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off the... Oh, wrong ones. Other ones. Oh, wait, uh, 6 then. Alright, alright. Try to figure out which action group is which. Alright, so we've got those now. So the vacuum engines develop 2,310 kilonewtons and you could figure out the sort of gap between the surface and the vacuum engines in a number of ways including you using RPA light but a, a simple slapdash way would be to compare the ISP between the surface Merlin engines to the vacuum Merlin engine that would be I mean, a first order approximation, we call it kindly, but it'll work. I mean, it'll be, it'll give you an idea. Okay, throttling down a bit as we get closer to orbit. I don't think it can carry too much more than this. I think we're, basically, we're going to end up reserving, and keep in mind, we do have the crew pod in there. Um, I think we're going to reserve enough for return and landing. I mean, landing, hopefully, but I don't think... We're, we've got enough to uh, load up on more than 100 tons in the cargo bay, so I think we just gained some better margin for return that I don't think that we had before. But I'll give it a one more test. So 523 meters per second. It depends on how, we need, how much we need for landing. I don't think I can land this safely. Uh, but yeah. If we turn back on, that's 495 meters per second with the surface level ones. 
And uh, we'll only need about 100 meters per second to deorbit uh, at most. So that'll be I mean, from this altitude. So that will be okay. Well, let's try tossing in an extra 20 tons and see how it does. And then maybe we'll do expendable mode. Again, I could put in a little bit more fuel in here to bring us up to 5,000 tons, but not a whole lot more. And uh, that improve the burn time a little bit. I don't like uh, our current duration on that. But, alright, let's open up. And we're actually carrying locked methane and oxygen here, if you're wondering. You might have seen some methane and oxygen not being uh, used in the upper right-hand corner on the previous launch. Uh, this is why. Okay, so 119.9 tons. Okay, here we go again. So throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. And again, 20 seconds of fuel is what we're reserving on Super Heavy. Okay, throttling down. Okay, and shut down, separation, and ignition. All right. 120 tons this time, we'll see how it goes. Okay, switching off the sea level ones. Okay, we're close to getting to orbit, throttling down. Okay, uh, 223 by 184 with 162 meters per second left. This probably wouldn't be good enough for return and landing. And uh, so with 120 ton payload, a direct ascent, drop off the payload and come back. Though uh, I, I haven't checked out how much we actually have ejecting the payload. Hmm. Um, let's say if I could dump this payload, uh, let's say we dump the fuel inside at least. Okay, so without the, the fuel in that tank, we seem to have 300 meters per second. So maybe we could come back, but we could certainly deorbit. It's just the touchdown burn, how much we need to reserve for that. I'd like 400 for that, personally. Uh, 302 doesn't sound great. What we can do here, without question, is we can get to a slightly higher orbit that is meant for or sort of a refueling orbit, let's say 400 by 400, like where the ISS is, and then other starships can refuel it and it can go somewhere else. If it's not coming straight back down, this is fine and it can carry the 120 tons. So the amount that we had before, uh, 180 meters per second or so, that'll be enough to get into a higher orbit and wait for refueling. So we can get 120 tons in that mode. Okay, let's see expendable mode with Starship and Super Heavy. Okay, so let me be clear, we do not actually encourage the abandonment disposal of Super Heavies. Uh, we do not want that. But this is just to see how much capacity we're giving up by recovering Super Heavy, and it's just a test. Uh, there's actually no reason to not recover Starship, but it's a small amount of fuel in the end anyway. But we're trying to carry a 180 ton payload right now. And so here we go, ignition. And launch. So again, 180 ton compared to launching 100 tons and basically guaranteeing that we can bring back Starship or launching 120 tons and at least guaranteeing that Starship can be refueled. So that's the comparison. As far as just putting 31 engines on the core, that might be helpful. We could probably also lighten up the tank a little bit. I'll consider that. Uh, I'll do some math and see what I think it ought to be at minimum <laughs> but uh, yeah now our trajectory is gonna be a little bit different for this since we are 
using all of the fuel from the first stage, so we'll be shallower than we would have been if we weren't. Though we have to take in consideration the fact that we have less thrust to weight ratio since we're carrying a heavier payload. Okay, things are progressing quite smoothly, no apparent problems. Past Mach 3. And let's throw all down a bit. And we are carrying a little bit of extra payload by way of food, water, and oxygen here, should be noted. We are assuming that they are going to send crew up with this particular cargo, because we have the crew pod. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay. Now we'll see how it does. 180 tons again. Because we're heavier, we're gonna have to keep all the engines on for a bit longer than before. So there is that. It's gonna be close either way. We're probably not going to have 100 for deorbit plus 400 for actually setting down safely, but we'll see what we get. We should have some reserve. We should have maybe a little bit to deorbit or to get into a higher orbit and refuel. Okay, I think that's good enough to switch off the sea level engines. So they are off. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. Uh, it looks pretty good on the Delta V remaining, actually. Yeah, 400 meters per second. Once we get rid of the cargo, it's going to be much more than that. I think previously I had tested 200 tons and it sort of barely got up to here. So maybe we could do 200 tons still. Uh, I mean, we should be able to do 200 tons still. I think 180, though, uh, we could probably eject it and easily come back down with this much left over. So that's pretty good. And that'll do it for me for retesting based on the increased thrust of, thrust of the Raptor engines and also decreased mass of the body of both Starship and Super Heavy based on my best judgment. <laughs> Let me put it that way. All right, uh, so further refinements will probably occur, but uh, I'll save it here. And again, I won't link uh, this version in the video description right now. I'll bundle it in with the... Uh, next version of my Real Rockets pack and just make a video about the Real Rockets pack and release it there. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.